I would like to thank uh, the students and the staff of Martin Luther King Jr. Jr. Leadership School. Uh, I've had just a wonderful time with them. The students really stepped up. The drawings we did were really quite complicated when they were done, but the important thing is all along each step was one simple little thing. And they learned that they could put those simple things together and end up with something that might be way beyond what they would think they could do if they were to see these drawings here when we started instead of a blank piece of paper. Um, we're gonna do something like that in just a moment. I, I do wanna show a couple pictures here. Actually, one picture here. I have one of the students brought their drawing up to show me. I did a picture of, a, uh, of the kind of ship that brought many people to the Grand Rapids area and to the western shores of Lake Michigan. It's the, uh, uh, the one kind of coming at you up here. And I did that with second graders. I usually only do that with fourth graders, but they were so tuned in that I really felt that they could do it. And this is one of the versions. And the, the thing we do with these drawings is we're looking for what makes each artist an individual. Check out this second grade version of that drawing. Isn't that beautiful? This is, this is Sharkia Caldwell's drawing, and she did a beautiful job of it. I'm gonna sit down now so we can start drawing. Yeah, absolutely awesome. And I wish I had every other picture that was here that all the other students did because they were fantastic. I should also thank all the moms and dads that, uh, that'll have uh, let me draw with their kids because I've seen some masterful works here and had a great time with them. They were really tuned in. I'm gonna get my page here and we're gonna get started on a drawing of eagles on the rise. Or in this case, an eagle on the rise. do that. Okay. I'm going to try it this way. In this drawing, I'd like to leave a little room down below. So just kind of, uh, you know, if you want to put your hand down here so you don't draw here. Uh, we're going to start out with one little dot, and this little dot is uh, the most important mark of all is kind of right in the middle of the page. And we're going to start from this dot and draw a few lines that will uh, get us on this journey. It's going to start out with uh, an object that begins many of our journeys in life and has a lot to do with the tutoring program here at uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Leadership Academy and the First United Methodist Church. I'd like you to draw a line that kind of comes up like this. It looks a little bit like a hill, and then it dips down like that, and then it curls back up kind of like a mustache. That doesn't have much to do with the theme, but it does kind of look like the curvature of a wing as well. And if you start right here and draw a line that comes up and over and back, it looks kind of like a wing there, too. And they don't have to be the same. Obviously, mine aren't. But this starts us on a little journey. It also looks a little bit like an upper lip. So we're dealing with something that involves words here as well. I would like you to draw a bump here like this, like a little letter C. Draw another one here, and another one, and another one, coming down like this, just a few of them and here too. Now these could be bird feathers, though they're arranged a little differently. Next, I'd like you to draw this line curving up like this and over like this. And the same thing with this one. You're kind of looking at the line above and it looks a little bit like it, but it doesn't have to be exactly like it. Right here, if you draw a little smile curve underneath that big fancy looking mustache, and another one underneath that, and then draw a line that comes out this way. This can be a straight line and it kind of touches that, or maybe it doesn't, but it comes out here and then back like this. 
draw the same thing over this way. See, we're drawing something that's called symmetrical. We're putting one thing on one side and the other one on the other side looks a whole lot like it. We'll come back this way, like this. Can you tell what that is yet? Kind of looks like a book. What if we draw a line that comes up like this and one that comes up like this? So you're kind of looking at a book that's open. And maybe you've read more than halfway through the book. Maybe that's why this has more pages. To make it look like pages, you can use these little letter C shapes as an idea of where the pages might be and maybe draw a few lines coming up like this. You don't have to draw all of them if you don't want to. These are pages that kind of curve up and in like this, but it makes it look more real. In all of the drawings that we did together, over the last two days, our goal was to first capture the shape of an object and then to do everything we could to make that object look as real as possible, adding one detail after another. A lot of the things we drew started out as one thing and ended up as another. Those fish we drew started out as rainbows and smiles, then turned into lemons, then turned into insects with antennas and finally fish. At any point along the way when we draw, our imagination can kick in and you might say, well, I like this idea better than the one I started out with, so maybe I'll run with it. Let's go ahead and draw these lines however you want to draw them. I'm going to make it look how it kind of, kind of skip through that. Hopefully that looks a little bit like a book. It'll look more like a book if we copy this angle here, coming back into our drawing further, giving it a little more dimension. And to do this, I'm going to start with a line that starts up like this and then down like that. I'm going to bring it right up to about here, like that, as though it's a page. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, well, a little different. I'll start down here like this and I'll roll up like that because when you're reading a book, pages kind of blow in the wind from time to time or you're flipping fast, or maybe something's happening to that book as you're reading it. Something might be coming out of it or mingling with the thoughts in your mind. There's a shape that's going to start right here, and I've got to be very careful with this one, especially with a permanent marker I can't erase. <laughs> I'm going to start right here with a line that comes up, and this is going to look maybe like a, like a flower coming out of this book. Just think of a flower petal coming up and over. When I get to right here, I'm going to break this line up just a little bit like that, and then angle it up like this, and then down like that. If you draw little feathers sticking out here on the back of the eagle's head, and then draw the beak of the eagle starting right here and curving down like this, then up and back, a little further than the top. And draw the lower part of the beak down here, like this. The eye of the eagle is up close towards the front, and you can draw it in here like that with a little darkness and a speck of light there to show the spark of light inside that bird. To the Native Americans, it was the eagle that carried man's prayer to the Great Spirit, the messenger bird, the one that could fly the highest, and the one that lived the longest, too. Birds are long-lived, they mate for life. There are a whole lot of lessons here. You start here and draw a line that curves up like this. You can imagine this incredible wingspan of this bird. I'm going to draw a little line curving back here. And how the feathers look like fingers on the ends coming out like this. And they begin to curve more and more as they come around here and get closer together. Like this, one after another. When you get down here, you can bring them up closer to the body of the bird. I'm going to take this line up here like that. And this line here, I'll draw up and over like this. 
The other wing of this bird is going to come out here. And you'll see the feathers, but you don't see the whole wing because it's facing away from us. See this wing coming back down like that. This eagle is facing this way, and you can draw the white crest of the eagle there, and a little bit over here. On this book, if you draw some lines like this, you can think of words, or maybe pictures in the book, that take us to far off places, maybe fly like an eagle into stories of nature or stories of faith or whatever you want. But just imagine words in here and pictures and the power of that book. Down here, if you write the word eagles, And then make the letters look a little fancier, like this. Or however you want to decorate them. Underneath it, you can write on the rise. So imagine this bird flying out of this, flying out of this book, out of the pages of the book, flying up like your imagination as you read. I'm going to add a couple more details here, and then I think I've got to turn this over to Mrs. Han Hawkins here. If you draw a line that comes up here like this, and over, and down like that, And a little curve here like this. And a line coming down there like that. You have another book on the shelf. And each of these books could have a title, something to do with what you're interested in, what you most want to read, or what you most want to learn. That's why we have this wonderful school here and wonderful programs like the, uh, like the tutoring program to help make reading and using these books easier and easier. Down here, I'd like you to uh, sign your name. Put your name on this little masterpiece. I want to show you a couple other drawings here I did at lunch. I'm going to put my name right here. When I started this drawing, this is the first idea I had right here. And then I thought if we took it further, it could become something like this, where reading books you can go back in, the sun rising in the background, how far our imagination can take us, how high our faith can take us, putting pencils down here as symbols of of writing and paintbrushes as symbols of our creativity and then arranging these letters a little differently. Right now what I'd like to do is ask you to hold up your masterpieces so I could see them. Hold them up proud. Oh my goodness, look at these birds. These are awesome. Amazing. I want to take some lessons from some of you here. Thank you for drawing with me. Awesome job. All righty. While 20 years is an amazing milestone for a program such as ours, out at the front table we will have a sheet which outlines the programs that we participate in with our tutoring center. And it's, it's quite amazing. I don't know of the scope of programming in any other public school in any state that I've lived in, 
it's something to be really, really proud of. So we've all worked together and it's something to celebrate. Now this program didn't happen by accident. Uh, First United Methodist Church decided 20 years ago that they wanted to have a real impact in the community, not be sending all of their mission dollars away from our community, but keep it here and there were certainly needs. And so the uh, leadership of First United Methodist Church somehow twisted the arms of a couple of fabulous ladies, Kathy Muir and Lois Mosley, who spearheaded the program 20 years ago. I would like for both of them to stand up and wave so that you can see them. (laughs) Kathy's in the back and Lois is up here. We're all very, very privileged to know them and to have worked with them. First United Methodist Church continues to support the program through all of these years, and the two pastors are here this evening. We have Tish Bowman and Gary Haller. Would you folks stand up quickly? There we go. Another person that was instrumental in promoting the partnership and making sure that it continued was the principal at the time, Ruth Jones, who was a very dynamic person and really helped us to get things going, and we're very happy that she's here with us tonight. She's in the back. And unknown to a lot of people, there was a principal in Forest Hills named Susie Penning who lent a lot of support with training and materials and guidance to get the reading program up and running. And she's also here with us tonight, so we're thrilled to have Susie Penning. Please stand. So tonight is not going to be a night of long drawn out speeches. It's going to be a lot of up and down and smiling and waving to people. And I think from henceforth what I'm going to do is ask that we just do silent cheers and applause without making any noise. And at the very end we'll just do a great big round of applause for all of the people that we're honoring, if that's fine with you. On the uh, tale of um, Ruth Jones, we had some wonderful principals who each put their special touch on our school. Jerry McComb, Carrie Tellerico, and our current principal, Trisha Mathis. So I know that Jerry's here. I don't know if Carrie is here. Jerry is back here. Oh, silent cheers, please. (laughs) That's going to be tough. Without our special donors who give us money to make sure that our programs run, we would have nearly nothing happening here. And so I don't think a lot of people realize what happens. The Sebastian Foundation has supported us for nearly all 20 years. They provide all the cultural arts assemblies, student recognition, supplies for the teachers, and all of the wonderful field trips that our children take. Ellen Sadler, who's also known as Grandma Ellen, is a wonderful friend to the children. She comes when she can, and she loves the hugs that the children share with her. She's here tonight, too, and in a minute I'll have her stand. She's provided the children with all their hoodies, their t-shirts, the free book fair, and many, many special events that we celebrate. Okay, well, go ahead and and stand up now. There she is, Grandma Ellen. You'll want to share a hug with her later. The Keller Foundation is a wonderful family foundation who has supported the program for years and years. And uh, the Student of the Month program is one of their special programs. So they make sure that the kids can go to the museums and out for lunch with their family. They also sponsor our spring outing that we take all the tutors and children to and Camp O'Malley. Our children only pay $5 to go to Camp O'Malley, and the Keller Foundation helps with the balance of that, so it's wonderful. Keller Foundation representatives, please stand. 
too. Where's Dave? <laughs> and Dave's being naughty back there. <laughs> The Heath Family Foundation, I don't believe anyone is here representing them, um, but they provide our tutoring center with activities, learning activities, and they provide the incentive money for the teachers for special awards for children. Do we have anyone here from the Heath Family? I know they're out of town and I don't think they're due back till tomorrow. <coughs> Excuse me. And the Beals Family faithfully donates money to us for parent programs. They sponsored our former um, Lunch Bunch program and parent education programs. And so we're very fortunate to have the Beals with us tonight. Would you stand, please? <laughs> now we have other sorts of supporters. One is Thornapple Elementary School has been our sister school for many, many years. They do amazing things. I know that Greg Schubel, their principal, is here. <laughs> and many, many parents there rally round. Um, they provide a King's Feast in November where they get all the food donated and 100% of the profits they donate to our school and that helps us to buy clothing for children. They also do a penny drive, um, book drives, and for our gift of giving, they sponsor the first, oh, I've lost the number, 55 people, I believe. So they sponsor a good chunk of children, which is great. We have our youngest honoree tonight is named Sydney Judnich. She's sitting over at the side. And Sydney has started a girls' service group and she, she's standing up. Wave your arms so everyone can see you. <laughs> Sydney and a handful of friends offer to do projects, whatever needs to be done for us. And so it's very wonderful that I can call Sydney and they'll bake cookies or they'll make little things that we need. So it's wonderful. Camp O'Malley is another special friend. And Becky is over here in the orange t-shirt. She's signing people up for camp tonight, so we're very excited that she's here and hope we break our record this year for the number of campers. <coughs> we also want to thank the Student of the Month venues. Those are the places where the children can choose to go, and there's a display out in the front lobby showing all of those but they usually give us a special pricing and they welcome our children and our families and we appreciate them. That would be the John Ball Zoo, the Grand Rapids Art Museum, the Public Museum, the Children's Museum, the Gerald Ford Presidential Museum, and Meyer Gardens and Sculpture Park. In addition, the children can choose to go to Johnny B's Hot Dogs and More right behind the school or Brick Road Pizza and I heard tonight there's another restaurant that's interested in joining up with that. So that will be coming soon, we hope. Mm. Literary Life Bookstore down at the corner of Eastern and Wealthy is another special friend that gives us a great deal on books. And it's a very friendly atmosphere, and we love them very much. Screen Ideas has a booth set up over here. Susie and Mark are the uh, folks that own that, and they are the ones that make all of our t-shirts, sweatshirts, and so on for us. And Susie is also a tutor this year. <clears throat> There's a display down at the other end of the room about cultural arts, and I would like to thank the Grand Rapids Symphony, the Grand Rapids Ballet Company, and Circle Theater, for the opportunity for me to write grants so that we get special pricing or free tickets to nearly all of their productions. So it's a wonderful partnership that we have with them as well. Did you introduce yourself? Mm -hmm. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Leah Muir <laughs> and I'm the volunteer coordinator for the tutoring center. So I'm employed by the church, but um, I get to work here with all of the students and the volunteers in the tutoring center. And then um, Jer is our church and school coordinator who does all of our grant writing and our funding and does everything else that goes on at the school. She's the catch-all be-all. 
Um, we'd also like to continue thanking um, our tutors who for the last 20 years have made this program possible. Without you, we wouldn't have been what we are today. Um, if you notice the large green paper on the wall over here, this is the list of all of our tutors, past and present, for the last 20 years. There are over 400 volunteers on that list. If by chance you find that your name has been omitted, it is not on purpose. Um, there is a sheet there that you can fill out your information and add it to it, just in case we missed from way back 20 years ago. Um, if you are currently or have been a tutor or a volunteer at some point, would you please stand up? <laughs> Not only do we tutor in the tutoring center for the kindergartner through second graders, but we also have people who come in with therapy dogs and have kids read to them. We have volunteers who tutor in the classroom and help teachers out, as well as our main program in the tutoring center. Um, the one of the impacts that we make on our kids, sometimes we don't see right away, but I want to read to you a letter that was written by one of a former MLK student who many of you have seen around here. Um, her name is Jessica Carter, and she came to our school um, when she was in elementary school and experienced some of the impact that our program has. So I want to read this letter to you. I was 11 years old when I moved to Michigan. I had to meet new friends and bond with new teachers. At my old school in Minneapolis, the teachers knew that I wasn't a strong reader, but at my new school, I was too embarrassed to tell anyone that reading was hard for me. The tutoring center at Henry only catered to the kindergarten through third graders, so it was impossible for me to get a tutor. I did get to bond with two of the tutors, Mrs. Muir and Mrs. Mosley. They would be at the school often, even when the other tutors weren't there. Mrs. Muir used to let me read to her, and she taught me different tricks to help me with my figuring out words and their meanings. She also helped me with spelling. I, also, I now have two BSs from Grand Valley State University in criminal justice and political science, and I'm working on a master in educational leadership. I'm currently also a substitute at MLK. So it's the impact of people like Lois and Kathy. So We also wouldn't be able to be in the school without the staff at MLK, both past and present. They are the ones that allow us to come into their classrooms, interrupt their classes, have their students get out of hand when we show up and all their students yell, tutors! Mm -hmm. um, and so it is forever grateful that you allow us into your classrooms to help your students. So if the staff at MLK would please stand so we can recognize you. volunteers who help our program out that are not seen like our volunteers who do the tutoring. We have shoppers that go shopping whenever we need supplies for us, when we need um, gift of giving, all the people who purchase and buy gifts so that parents can have gifts to give their kids at Christmas. Um, those who purchase uniforms for our uniform closet and help supply the closet and keep it clean. Um, the bakers that we have who supply cookies for all of our holiday parties as well as um, birthday treats, the MLK parents who are very supportive and will come and volunteer with us making book covers or helping out in the classrooms, um, all of our advisory board members from both church and school who help out in our community, and then also um, all of our supporters from First United Methodist Church who through many ways will step in and fill roles that are needed along the way. Let's give them a round of applause. As well. Mm. Most of all, we couldn't do it unless we had the kids here at MLK. So can I have all of the MLK students, whether you are past or present, please stand. <laughs> it is you who we love the most, and you are the reason that we are here and will continue to be here for hopefully a long time. 
You'll also notice that all of the staff and students have these fabulous t-shirts, their leadership t-shirts on today that are in commemoration of our 20th anniversary as well. The celebration of our 20th anniversary will continue a bit after this evening. Um, we have planned a gym mural that will be painted in the gym next fall, and it will end up being a mural that um, will have MLK on it, as well as a soaring eagle, and so that will be next year. And then we also have um, plantings that we are going to be doing in the school gardens in the front of school which will be in honor of our founding mothers of the program, Lois and Kathy, um, and they will be planted there in the memoriam for them. <laughs> they also will be surrounded with the daylilies out there, which was uh, the commemorative flower of a 20th anniversary. There's one other person that we need to make mention of this evening, and that would be Mrs. Diane Vandermotz, if she could please stand. <laughs> Between Kathy and Lois and Jared and myself was Diane in my position. And so we don't want to forget Diane and the impact that she had here as well. I know she loved these students and continues to love them well. And now uh, we are going to wrap things up here. We would like for you to mix and mingle with each other, meet three new people you've never met before, spend time touring the tutoring center and visiting all of the displays that are out so you can see more about what our program is. And if you feel so inclined to volunteer for our program, there are sign-ups at the tables. We figure if the classrooms in K through two are maxed out next year, we will need about 115 tutors every week in our school, which is our goal, all right? And it's all for the kids. So thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it, and here's to 20 more years. Thank you.